Not everything in sports is as clean as a whistle. Throughout the years, countless circumstances have left Euros outraged by dirtier tactics that have taken place in competition. From the illegal chop block in NFL and bean balls in Major League Baseball to my Tyson mouncing on Evander Holyfield's ear in boxing. MMA has not been immune either. We went to great lengths to honor the dirtiest deeds ever committed in MMA. There are multiple offenders listed and others who have gone rough seemingly out of the blue. How does your list compare? Number 10. Kid Hackney vs. Joe Son His ball shot burst will forever live in infamy, but Hackney's strikes were legal in the early days of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. With everything safe for eye gouging, fish hooking and basically stabbing your opponent with a sheath considered fair play. It was all part of the game when Hackney treated Son's groin like a heavy bag. More than two decades later the male population still collectively groans at the thought. In fact, part of the hilarity surrounding this fight is that Son tapped, tapped and tapped some more. But while a young referee named John McCarthy asked him, are you done, are you done, he eventually pulled Hackney away. Number 9. Bob Schreiber vs. De Jiro Matsui Schreiber was nicknamed Dirty Bob for a reason and demonstrated it in spades against Matsui inside Pride Fighting Championships. After the two battled it out for almost the entire first round, Schreiber found himself stuck in an inverted heel hook. Matsui could not land the submission and Schreiber tried to shake free with a series of punches to the head. When Schreiber stood up, the bell rang to the end of the round as Matsui let go of the submission attempt and roll over into the, his hands and knees. As Matsui was about to get up, Schreiber unexplicably decided it was a good idea to deliver a blow after the bell, his weapon of choice and illegal acting to the Matsui's brainstem. Number 8. Gary Goodrich vs Pedro Tavio Goodrich was one of the stars of the MMA infancy. His brawls during the early days of the Ultimate Fighting Championship and Pride remain some of the most memorable in history, and Goodrich could get a little nasty whenever the situation required of him. Big Daddy competed in the same day tournament at International Vale Tudo Championship first in Brazil. Otavio reached the final against Gurich, but was reported to have been crushing his opponent's private parts in each of his previous bouts. When the Brazilian got around to facing Gurich, he got a taste of his own medicine. Wes Sims vs Frank Mir Mir quickly got the fight to the mat and looked to end it via submission. The last wagon eventually locked into two separate rear naked chokes, but seems successfully defended both. When Mir abandoned the chokes, he expertly switched to an arm burn from his back. Sim stood and slammed Mir onto his head to break the lock, a defensive maneuver which remains acceptable protocol. What Sims did next shocked onlookers. Despite being dumped on his head, Mir still had Sims' arm. Sims then proceeded to stomp all over Mir's cranium, knocking him senseless. Even though stomping on a downed opponent was forbidden, Sims elected to bypass a rulebook in order to smash Mir's face. That decision led to a well-deserved disqualification. Number 6. Ricardo Arona vs Kazushi Sakuraba Arona was never a favorite for a majority of MMA fans. He was hard to root for because his surly attitude and grinning style, but the path he took to defeat the legendary Sakuraba in Japan elicited a rash of venom from virtually everybody in the sport. Sakuraba whiffed on a double leg takedown in the second round and ate a kick to the face for his troubles. When Sakuraba turned away, Arona again kicked him in the face. The Brazilian's toenail slashing opened the skin above his left eye. The Gracie Hunter eventually pulled guard, but Arona took his right hand, squeezed Sakuraba's cut and dug his finger into it. Sakuraba had his cuts looked at by the ringside physician and was eventually deemed unfit to continue in between rounds 2 and 3. Number 5. Rosimar Palhares vs Jake Shields When witnessing Palhares purposely wrenching Shields' right arm well after he had tapped, it is important to remember the full-prone Brazilian has long rap sheet of unsportsmanlike acts. In the WSOF 22nd main event, Shields complained to referee Steve Mazagati at the end of the second round about Palhares allegedly wrecking his eyes from guard. Replays seemed to back up the former Strikeforce champion's claims. At second minute of round 3, Shields wandered into Kimura and tapped. 
Palhares did not release the hold for some 3 seconds, despite the fact that Mazagati moved in to try to stop it as Shields continued tapping. All the while Toquinho had a sinister grin on his face. Palhares has since been stripped of the WSOF welterweight title. Number 4. Renzo Gracie vs Ben Spikers Before he arrived in Pride Fighting Championships, Gracie was a well-established brawler who could blur the lines between clear and dirty. After grappling with judo black belt spikers in his white gi, Anogi Gracie eventually transitioned to the back and clinched the rear naked choke. Spikers tapped and the three tried to get the Brazilian to break his hold to no avail. The 1988 Olympic bronze medalist eventually went to sleep and once Gracie was janked off of him, he kicked the unconscious Spikers in the arm. Worse yet, once Gracie rose to his feet, he stepped on the Dutch judoka's neck as he walked away. He was booed lastly and chastised by the referee. Gracie ultimately did the right thing and went over to check on his fallen foe. But the damage to his reputation has been done. Number 3. Gerard Gourdeau vs Yuki Nakai Gourdeau, if you recall, competed in the first ever Ultimate Fighting Championship bout, soccer kicking Taylor Tali Toot into the front row of McNichols Arena in Denver. He also reached the UFC 1 tournament final, where he lost to Royce Gracie and earned a permanent place in MMA history books. Some two years later, Gordo fought Nakai in the first round of Valley to the Japan 1995 tournament, and it got ugly. Nakai buried his face in Gordo's chest as the two men clinched along the ropes. No match appeared to be happening. After some time, the Dutchman jammed his left thumb into Nakai's right thigh, leaving it badly damaged. Nakai fought on. The three referees, one inside the ring and two outside, witnessed the act and began visibly yelling at Gordo. He simply shrugged and played innocent. Nakai ultimately submitted Gordo with a four round heel hook and then defeated Craig Pittman in the semi finals before running into Ricks and Gracie in the final. There, he bowed out via rear naked choke. Nakai never fought again and became permanently blind in his right eye, thanks to Gordo. Number 2 Mike Kyle vs Brian Olson Kyle shrugged off Olson, who attempted to take his back during a scramble. Olson then rolled to his knees, only to be blasted by a soccer kick to the face. He, co he collapsed backwards unconscious, his legs pinned beneath him as Kyle drilled him with the right hand, even as a referee, Joe Rosenthal, intervened. Kyle continued his attack on his defenseless opponent, with Rosenthal still trapped on him. Olson was taken to the hospital for treatment and returned to the fighting seven months later. Kyle, meanwhile, was suspended and did not compete again for two years. When he was allowed back into the sport, Strikeforce welcomed him with an open arms. Number 1. Gilbert Iwell vs. Ed Beckman The official fight result says it all. Disqualified. Iwell co the referee. After receiving several warnings for clinching and failing to move out of the corner, Iwell lost his mind and dropped Mauno. Yes, the defenseless referee with a perfect left hook. Mauno hit the canvas instantly. As Iwell walked past him, he gave him a swift kick to the body for a good measure. Iwell was immediately disqualified, and the dazed and confused Mauno wandered aimlessly around the ring before being tended to by medical personnel. Hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe.